Hi, today we're going to talk about sharpening the spindle gouge. The spindle gouge is one of the more difficult tools to sharpen, and I'll show you why. A tool like a roughing gouge is simple to sharpen because it involves a simple rolling motion side to side. Once again, notice the simple rolling motion side to side. Tools like spindle gouges as well as bowl gouges are much more difficult to sharpen. They have a compound bevel, meaning there's more involved than just the roll. Let me show you. A close look at the bevel of a spindle gouge reveals the complex nature of its bevel. You'll notice that there is some rounding here, but there's also a sweeping motion going back. The rounding motion is dominant, but there is a slight sweep going to the back of the tool. A close look at a bowl gouge also reveals a compound shape. Although there is minor rounding in the front, there's a large area of sweeping towards the back. So we not only need a method to be able to sharpen this compound shape, but we have to be able to replicate the process each time. The best method I've found to do this is to use the Wolverine jig system with the very grind attachment. Depending how you set up the very grind jig, it can give us a rolling motion with a slight sweat back, as with this spindle gouge, all the way to a large sweeping motion with a minimum amount of roll, as with this bowl gouge. Let's take a look at how we would set up our Varigrind jig in order to sharpen a spindle gouge. We control the amount of roll and sweep by loosening this wing nut and moving the position of the leg. I found that putting the leg in the top position would give us best results for the spindle gouge. It gives us more roll, but a slight sweep side to side. We must be able to mount our tool into the jig in a repeatable fashion. The manufacturer recommends making this mounting jig. It's drilled out with a fastener bit, and it's one and three quarters inch deep. We loosen the brass thumb wheel on the Varigrind jig. We insert the tool, and we tighten it very slightly. Now we go over to the jig that I just showed you. We place our Varigrind jig on top of the wooden block and we loosen the brass wheel and we allow the tool to bottom out at the bottom of the wooden jig. Then we tighten the brass wheel. Now we're able to set our tool at a repeatable distance of one and three quarter inches extension from the jig. We take a magic marker and we draw a solid line on our bevel. We now place the Varigrind jig into its base and we proceed to try to line up the bevel of the tool by moving the base of the jig in or out. We eye it up till we have our bevel close. Then we take our hand and gently turn our grinding wheel. Now we examine the line we made with the magic marker. You'll notice that the grinding wheel removed the marker at the top of the bevel, but not the bottom, which means we now have to adjust the base of our jig. In this case, move it closer to the wheel. I recolor our line with the magic marker. We put our jig back into the base. We loosen the base, and we move it slightly closer to the wheel. I once again place the jig back into the base, put our tool against the wheel, and gently turn the wheel by hand again. you notice this time the marker was completely removed from the bevel. This indicates we have our tool set at the proper angle. At this point I want to talk about the shape of the tip of the tool. You notice the curve. I have this spindle gouge ground to what's called a fingernail grind. It's shaped like the end of a fingernail. No jig is going to replicate that shape. This is going to be determined by how much time the tip of the tool spends on the grinding wheel versus the sides. If the tip of the tool spends too much time on the grinding wheel, it would flatten that fingernail shape. 
if the tip doesn't spend enough time on the wheel, it would generate a pointed tip. So what we want to do is avoid sharpening like this. You don't want to start at the tip, go to one side, go back to the tip, go to the other side, and go back to the tip. What you're doing is, you're hitting the tip twice for every time you hit one side. This would cause it to flatten the fingernail grind in the front. Here's the procedure I use for sharpening my spindle gouge. I touch one side of the tool to the wheel. I rotate the tool, and right before I reach the tip, I lift the tool off of the wheel. I rotate the tool over, I touch the other side of the tool to the wheel, and once again I rotate towards the tip. Before I reach the tip, I again lift the tool off of the wheel. Now I position my tool so that the flute is facing up. I touch the tip gently to the wheel and I can roll the tool back and forth and then control the shape of the tip of the tool. Now remember, whenever we sharpen a tool, we touch it lightly to the wheel. We never push down. And here's what the sharpening looks like. We turn on our grinding wheel. Let the wheel come up to speed. We touch one side to the wheel. Roll it to the front. Lift the tool. Rotate the tool over. Do the other side. Roll to the front. Once again, lift the tool. And now we shape the front. And here we have a sharpened tool. We've maintained the angle of our bevel as well as kept our fingernail grind in the front. And that's how we sharpen a spindle gouge. I hope this video helped you out. Good luck with sharpening your spindle gouge, and thanks for watching.